Good morning. morning. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. I pray that everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Either way, I believe we all have something to be thankful for. Amen. The goodness of the Lord, if nothing else, the Lord's been good to me. And I can see he's been good to you too. Amen. You don't look like what you've been through. Hallelujah. You ever think about that? That's the reality. We don't look like what we've been through. Because if somebody knew our whole story, mm, mm, mm. but I'm still here. Hallelujah. Well, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on this morning. We greet you knowing that he is faithful and believing that he has great and wonderful things in store for us all. Amen. Amen. To those that are uh, meeting with us via social media, good morning. We welcome you uh, to Redeeming Love Word Ministries where Jesus is Lord and where we are about serving our God and bringing him glory and honor because we believe we are in the midst of a kingdom movement. Hallelujah. Vision here is providing biblical solutions for everyday problems. One of the common denominators amongst men is we have problems. Amen. But they are biblical solutions. Yes. I'm just, just getting everybody, you know, regrouping from Thanksgiving, getting that tryptophan out of everybody's system so that they can wake up, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Amen. Then we're going to get rolling. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want to speak with you from the topic, serving the king during changing times and seasons. Serving the king during changing times and seasons. Go with, me with, go with me in a word of prayer, would you please? Our Father and our God, again, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we're opening up your word today. God, there are hearts that need to be challenged. There are hearts that need to be spoken to. God, there are hearts that simply just need to hear from you. Lord, I pray today that there will be a word fitly spoken for the due season we find ourselves in. In Christ's name, amen. Again, serving the king during changing times and seasons. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, that it is indeed God who changes times and seasons. I think sometimes things can change, and we as people don't always like change. We like to know it's going to be like this always. I mean, for instance, many of you subconsciously will go to work on tomorrow not realizing you're traveling the same route that you always do. And there will be numerous things that happen on the side of the road, in front of you, behind you, that you won't even consciously be aware of. Because it's the same thing you always do. It's no change. But let them put up a detour sign. And you have to take another route. What in the world is going on? Why are we detouring? What, I, I don't know what's ha- what, what happened up there. All of a sudden you become alert because there's a change. There's a difference. Something else is going on. Well, God is the one who changes times and seasons. I believe, you know, you ever wonder, I mean, just, you know, and I'm going somewhere with this. I really am. Why didn't we just keep, like, summer all year long? I mean, you ever wonder why did God actually make seasons? I mean, you know, you, come on, y'all know them folk to be like, I can't stay. It's too hot. You know, they hate summer. Then the fall come. Oh, fall is so beautiful, so crisp, so fresh. I mean, come on, you know you hear people saying all of this kind of stuff. Then you got the folk that can't wait till it snow. Oh, it's like we're not happy no matter what. See, it's somebody complaining about the season. I can't stand spring. It, my allergies, oh. You know, you got all of this. We never happy. And you say, well, why didn't God just give us one season? Well, what are you saying? Because when you look in heaven, there's no sun 
because there is the son. So we come to a place where there is only one season. Oh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen already. So just saying, God, why? why? I, I, I believe that God likes us to be flexible with change. Where he is the constant, not the things around us. Because what we like is to make the things around us the constant so that way we don't have to change. But he changes the times and the seasons. Y'all ready now? Let's go to, well, I was going to tell you to go to (laughs) Daniel 2 and 21, but we talked about that, so we'll just take off from there. If we're going to serve the king during these changing times and seasons, I want to give you three things today that I believe that are critical components of us serving the king during a changing time or changing season. If you think about it, every one of us have dealt with change. We've, you know... Changing, watch this, it's changing in times, yeah, we know, okay, this goes from, you know, we're in November now, we'll be in December, we've been in October, so the times change, but seasons also change, and I don't mean spring, summer, winter, and fall. What about the seasons of your life? Do you know that God also changes those? Takes you from one season to the next season. Now, everybody loves that season with mountaintop, oh, it's Everything is going on. God, it seems like God hearing you before you call. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe it? I just thought about this and God made it happen. But, you know, every mountain also has a valley. What's it like? Man, where is God? I mean, Lord, I've been I'm believing you for this. And I thought that this is. uh, But, Lord, it just seems like because you value it's the valley season now. But you know, the Bible says that he's the God of the valleys and the mountains. So it don't matter where you're at. The seasons don't matter. It's the one who changes the times and the seasons that matters. So let's talk about serving the king during changing times and seasons. Number one, the first thing I believe that we need to do or understand if we're going to serve the Lord during these changing times and seasons is to learn to feed on God's faithfulness. Feed on the faithfulness of the king. You know, the Bible says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. And that's true. But watch this. I I want you to look at something. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. I'm talking to you about feeding on the faithfulness of the king. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is faithful. Let's just, just for a moment, God is faithful. Now, God cannot help but do what he is. Let's say it again. God cannot help but do what he is. God is faithful. So God's going to do what he is. Okay, God is faithful, so since God is faithful, he's going to do faithfulness. We can, watch this, we find ourselves often anticipating or desiring the next thing for God to do. What have we fed on his faithfulness from before? Every one of us have been in a place where we wondered would God come through and now we're on the other side of that wondering. But do we remember to feed on his faithfulness or do we reach out into the future and wonder can God do this, whatever this may be, instead of feeding on what he has done. Feed on the faithfulness of the king. The times are changing, the seasons are moving. But can you feed on the faithfulness of the king, what he has done? See, it's not my story. It's yours. What has he done in your life where you saw that God is faithful? See, every one of us has an individual testimony. Irrespective of how we may feel about standing before others and declaring what our testimony is, you have one. 
because God has revealed himself to you as faithful. Can you feed on God's faithfulness? See, God is what he does, and he does what he is. And God is faithful. First Thessalonians 5 and 23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. So God is faithful with the call that's on our lives. Too often, I believe, and I don't know, maybe this is just me. Too often, I believe I put too much emphasis on me. On trying to be perfect. The pressure of trying to do it all right. To always make the right decision. To always answer the right way. Minister Plum, I'm finding in the course of life, it's good to have imperfections. I've been allowing myself some imperfections. I'm learning. When I, when I told you all I was living a carefree life, I wasn't playing. I'm learning to embrace the imperfections. It, you, you know, when, when something ain't quite right. Because it's all right. Don't have to be perfect. Because how much self-imposed pressure have we been living under because we didn't realize faithful is he that calleth us who will also do it. The only thing about us in there is that he called us, but he's going to do it. He's going to present me my whole spirit, soul and body blameless. That's what he's going to do, not me. Oh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Because sometimes it's the pressure of trying to be perfect. Now, God, this is what you're going to do because you called me. I didn't call me. See, if you call yourself, then that's your self's responsibility. But since I didn't call me, I ain't got to do it. I'm just feeding on his faithfulness. I understand how things are changing. It's left and right, uh, up and down, sideways. Stuff is going crazy. Every day you hear something that's just it's almost remarkable. And I was telling somebody, I said, that the thing that's happening is people are becoming desensitized. When you, I'll show you how. When we hear that there's another shooting, another mass shooting, you don't go like, oh, my God. You say, where? You're not shocked that it happened. You just wonder where it's at. It has become such a norm that we are accustomed to them happening in our society. We just wonder what state, what city. That's all. I said, God, help us. And here's the, you know, here's the thing that's interesting or that I find interesting when you look at this. They always go and they say, well, uh, let's go see what was his motive. See, that's how you know that the world doesn't understand what's behind these things. Because they're looking to see, was it a hate crime? Can I, I, I know, I know, I, I'm going to say this here in the house of God. It's all hate crimes. Because the enemy hates anything that's in the image of God. So out of the hate crime, he's inspired people to kill or to murder other people. It's a hate crime, all of it. We're just trying to look to see if it's, if, well, based on ethnicity, uh, well, based on gender, well, based on identification. No, it's all a hate crime. What's the real inspiration behind it? Well, let's keep going because we're going to feed on God's faithfulness. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says, but the Lord is faithful 
who shall establish you and keep you from evil. The Lord is faithful who going to establish you and keep you from evil. I ain't got to keep me from evil. That ain't my job. That ain't my responsibility. See, I'm learning that God is not just faithful towards me. He is faithful with me. He's going to handle me faithfully. He's going to take care of me. So I'm going to feed on his faithfulness, not on mine. See, often we, we, the emphasis is, uh, you know, finding a faithful man and commit these things to a faithful man. Yes, that's all true. But if you're going to be a faithful man or a woman, you're going to have to be faithful to God. You're going to have to understand that God is faithful to you. Let, let, let me do this. Psalms 37 and 3. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. One version says, you're going to feed on his faithfulness. If you learn to trust God, you know, Minister Plummer, I'm learning that Christianity, if you want to look at whether Christianity is a religion or not, let's think about some of the words that are used in Christianity. Words like trust. The word trust implies relationship, not legality. Love, it implies relationship. The words in Christianity are relational. God wants a relationship with us. So when we're talking about feeding on his faithfulness, how much do we know about God? How much have we learned where we trust his faithfulness? Listen to this. Can we get to the place where we trust God's faithfulness more than our own? See, oftentimes we're comparing ourselves with other people and whether or not we're faithful. But how, how do we look and say, God, you're faithful. The pressure ain't on me. I remember the late Bishop Lockett said, it's going to be some, we're going to be surprised at some of the people we see in heaven. And some of the people we don't. Because it's his faithfulness that counts. Uh, I don't ever see when we first got saved. We trusted him. Because we knew how messed up we were. I don't want to start thinking that, oh, OK, I'm, I'm doing so much better now that I can trust me and not him. I want to feed off his faithfulness. And see, when we feed on God's faithfulness, it causes us, look at verse 4, Psalms 37. This is my next point. The light in the king. We're going to feed off of the faithfulness of the king. Then we're going to start to delight in the king. Bible says in Psalms 37 and 4, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It's hard to delight in the king without first trusting in the king. See, if you're going to delight in him, you're going to have to trust him. And I'm finding out that if I delight, if I start trusting in the king, delight comes automatic. Because I know God got this. Just a little exhortation today, that's all. Just a little exhortation. I know we're coming out of Thanksgiving and everybody's kind of, you know, been, you, you won't have time with family and we don't laugh and joke and so on and so forth. And I'm saying, you know, Lord, as we look at what's coming, yeah. as we look at what we've been through, yeah. we do know things are going to change. All of us know that. Yeah. Job changes. Yeah. These things have come and gone. But God's been faithful. Yeah. So what if we learn to delight ourselves in him now? If I'm delighting, see, here, here's the thing. If I'm delighting in the Lord and not in other things, then if the other things change and my delight was in the Lord anyway, I can still keep delighting. So I'm talking about how do we really function in this? 
changing times and seasons. I want to delight in him. Because he says, I'm the Lord God and I change not. So if I can delight in him, I ain't got to worry about being up and down, hills and valleys. I don't have to worry about that because God is faithful. I can feed on his faithfulness and then delight in him. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. I'm preaching to myself. going to make me happy. Look at verse 5, Psalms 37. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Now, this is a very interesting passage of scripture here, verses five and six, because what he's saying is the implication is to commit your vindication. You know how when somebody do you wrong, when something ain't going right, commit your vindication to the Lord. Trust him with it. Trust that God going to work it out. Trust that God going to fix it. Trust that he going to make the way. Trust that he going to handle this. See, it says... If you do that, he's going to act in a way that calls your righteousness to shine. See that? It's an invitation to say, okay, God, I believe you got this. Now, I want to put my hand on this and really act out. Oh, no, 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 no doubt. But I am going to trust by committing, by committing this to you, I'm going to trust that you're going to bring it to pass. So that my righteousness or my right standing with you will shine like the noonday. See, that's me delighting in him. Because it's sometimes what Sharon, when they change stuff, you know, when they, some changes just ain't in your favor. Sometimes things are just changed for somebody else's advantage. I just like, Lord, that ain't right. But God, this is about, oh, but Lord, I'm going to trust that you got this. I'm going to trust that you got this. That was supposed to be my promotion, but I'm going to trust that you got this. See, it's, I want to learn to trust God with everyday life. Everyday life. Some things that should be done in our favor. I'm just, uh, let, me, let, me, let me get back here. I was drifting for a moment thinking about me, but I'll, let's get back here. Verse 7, he says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. First off, rest in, rest in the Lord. God has a rest for his people. I'm tired of being so worked up about so much stuff. I mean, I, honestly, do you know that they say stress is the number one killer in America? Stress. Let me ask you this. How can stress be the number one killer when we supposedly live better than our previous generation? I mean, look at the houses you live in. Most people got multiple vehicles. Can I be honest? Houses now got more bathrooms than we had bedrooms. But stress is killing folk. What's wrong? How are we getting more, but stress is killing more? I'm going to say something, Lord help me. Makes you wonder if less is more. I, I, I said, see that? That started to drop on a couple people here already. <laughs> Makes you wonder if less is more. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. How is it? Because I, I think about this. You ever think about how you grew up? Remember how happy? There was a point in time when you didn't know you didn't have. Maybe it's the pressure with knowing that you should have this. So you operate under that pressure, and before you know it, you're dealing with the stress the society has put on you. 
Ladies, how many dresses are enough? Let, let me do better. How many, how many shoes are enough? No, nah, brother. No, nah, okay, brothers. We ain't checking out now. You, you know we in that too now. I mean, do you have you thought about how big our closets are? Think about how big your closet was growing up. If, 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 our clo- if we can't walk in our closet, now something wrong. We have to have a walk-in closet. Some of our closets look like bedrooms. What is this? So now you can't have a closet that big and not have something in it. We got to fill it up now. We got to put stuff in there. Matter of fact, I need to use the other side over here to put something else over here. I said, Lord, what, what, what is that? When I think about how many shoes I used to have growing up. I mean, we had the church pair of shoes. <laughs> church shoes and, you know, the other ones. The other ones went everywhere else. Wherever that, wherever that was, that's where the other ones went. Yes, sir. But these was for church. Only. Only. And you knew not to go outside with them church shoes on. Oh. You ain't playing outside in them. Look at us now. I mean, I, ain't, I, ain't, I am not knocking on anybody. I'm just talking about learning to delight ourselves in the Lord. Because, can I be honest? I'm telling you about changing times and seasons. We just changed from Thanksgiving to Christmas season. The pressure is about to hit people. I got to go out and get this. I got to do this for Christmas. I got to get. Okay, now, where's that pressure coming from? That ain't God. God's not telling you that. In the midst of. I'm just being, I'm not trying to do a doom and gloom. I'm trying to do reality. In the midst of an economy that's on the brink of a recession, the pressure that's going to be put in front of you. You ever wonder what Black Friday really means? It's to put the companies in the black. It ain't for you. All they do for you is say, sell. It's it's not really a sale. (laughs) So here we go. The season has changed. So we're moving into a whole new season, and it's a season designed to get us to purchase. To make you feel like you don't have enough. And I'm not knocking anybody's Christmas. I want you to go ahead and do whatever you feel is right, but don't do it out of pressure. Don't do it out of obligation. Because we have to be careful. Because if not, we're being manipulated more. You know Christmas comes sooner every year. Christmas started after Halloween this year. Oh, yeah, they start putting up stuff after Halloween. Just skip right over Thanksgiving. Y'all don't spend enough on Thanksgiving. So let's start bombarding you for Christmas right now. Well, you know we got to get this and we got to get that. I was telling uh, I was telling my, my daughter about Michaela. I said, I'm going to buy her a box for Christmas. Because they love the box, not what's inside of it. We have to understand you all, as children, we were innocent to all of these pressures. We didn't even know they existed. We had, our world was so captivating that we loved life itself. Literally, we, we were delighting. And then we found out about the pressures of society. And it ain't just the kids. I'm going to be good because I know y'all looking at me like, some people look like, I hope he don't say nothing about it or nothing else about Christmas. I hope, I ain't gonna, I'm going to leave it alone. I ain't, I ain't going to leave it alone. Because I understand some people are really sensitive about that stuff. But you know what? I hope you ain't going in debt. 
I hope you ain't, I, I hope everything you spending you can pay for. Because whether you like me or not on what I'm saying is right. Because lo and behold, if you're putting all of this on somebody's credit card and assuming that, oh, well, it's going to be all right, catch me if you can, they're going to catch you. Because this, this, uh, this society is set up to it, get people indebted. The American economy survives on debt. You, you are uh, an abnormality if you're out of debt. They don't even know how to deal with you. I'll prove it to you. The credit system is set up on debt. If you don't have debt, they can't even give you a decent credit score. Because they don't know how to evaluate you not having debt. All right. I know somebody said, well, I... Just let's just preach. You shouldn't be dealing with this kind of people are in this. This is what's stressing folks out. But if we learn to delight ourselves in the Lord and not in all of these other things, we'll be all right. Isn't it amazing? He said, delight ourselves in the Lord and he'll give us the desires of our heart. So instead of instead of pursuing the desires of our heart, what if we pursued the delighting in the Lord? I mean, I, I just just think of some of these things. Sometimes you see these older people who have just moved to a home and they just, they good to go. Amen. They learned a lesson somewhere along in life and said, it don't take all that. No. They learned to just, I, I'm, I'm good. Yes. How long do we have to do that? How long do we have to keep climbing this ladder that we feel is going to have something at the top that's going to be so overwhelming? Well, let's keep on going. Rest in the Lord, I'm telling you. Verse 8, he says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall, shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they will inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. See, don't let the, the success of the schemes of people that do evil, don't let that bring you, bring you to a point of frustration and anger. In other words, we see stuff that somebody did something and they schemed and it was successful. That could frustrate you. That can anger you. That can move you to a place of wanting vengeance. Move you to a place you want to hurt somebody. No, 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 I'm serious. See, but he says, look at this, verse 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. In other words, don't let that, don't let that bother you because that's coming to an end shortly. It's coming to an end shortly. He says, for yet a little while. That's about to be over. That was a short run. It looked good for them. Looked like they got over. Looked like they got away. Looked like all that had worked out for them. That's coming to an end. He said, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. What the king has for us is worth the wait. Job said it this way in Job 14 and 14, all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Sometimes it ain't, when you stop and think about it, it's not worth getting upset over. Just wait till your change come. See, if we know that God changes times and seasons, let's wait till our change come. I'm going to delight in him because my change is coming. Yeah, I don't like what they did, but I'm going to delight in him. Because my change coming. See, but when you're so caught up in everything else that's happening around you, you don't realize that God is the only thing that doesn't change. So just delight in him. My change is coming. Well, pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. I, I, you're right, I don't. I just don't understand what you're going through where you just can't obey. 
I just don't understand. Let's close out with this. Number three, not only are we going to feed on God's faithfulness, not only should we delight in the king, but listen to this. Keep trusting the king. Keep trusting the king. Everybody in here, God has given you a track record. He's given you a resume. A personal one. With him. Like I said earlier, we all have these things that we've gone through where God has come through with us. We thought, man, it looked like it wasn't going to work out. Looked like we weren't going to come out. Looked like, God, how is there ever going to be a way? And lo and behold, here you are. Some of us, it was jobs. Looked like we weren't going to ever get our career going. Like, you know, we, we, God, are we destined to be in poverty all of our lives? Now nah, look at you. I mean, that, 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 exactly. You look at, that's the track record he's established with you. Some of us dealt with sickness in our bodies and, you know, laying there on, you, in the hospital bed or, Lord, is it ever going to get better? Now here you are walking around and if you don't tell nobody, they don't know. Because God is faithful. Some of us been in bad relationships. It seemed like God, is, oh, oh, Lord, I got to be with this person. They, they just don't lost their mind. Now here you are and you joyful and going on like what? Because God is faith. That's part of your track record. And and listen, I ain't talking about just everybody that's uh, married either. Some single folk. Listen, you were in some relationships that were jacked up, tore up from the flow up, and you were part of it, wondering, am I ever going to get out of this? Lo and behold, here you are, still clothed in your right mind, although you didn't think... You would be. (laughs) See, it's the truth. God's got a track record with us individually. So now he's saying keep trusting him. Watch this. Not start trusting him. Keep trusting him. Keep trusting him. Let me get in here. Let me me get into this. Okay. Verse 34. (laughs) It says, wait on the Lord and keep his way, not my way, his way. Because you know my way wouldn't always be the right way. (laughs) All right, I'll be good. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. You're going to live to see this happen. See, that's why I said it ain't songs to me. It's really, see, there's some things that God allowed you to go through and got jerked over. You got messed with. But he said, wait a minute. What I'm going to do is allow you to live to see this. You're going to live to see the end of this on how I'm going to handle this. If you keep trusting me. And and see, let's be honest. We don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like when somebody has done something to me. I've always, even as a child, injustices have bothered me. I don't like that. But you see so much injustice. He says, wait on the Lord. So the first thing we had to wait on him. Wait on God to handle this. Keep his way. Keep doing what he told you to do. His way, not our way. So that, that keep his way is a big thing right there. Because you could say you waiting on God while you over here doing your Hagar thing. But keep his way. What is God's way? What did he tell you? You know how sometimes God tells you stuff like, be quiet. Hold your peace. But God, but God, hold your peace. But I know I'm right. It don't matter. Hold your peace. You you, you know, I know we all, we see Deacon Green, he's so mild-mannered. Deacon Green, you ever wanted something to make you just, and God says, now hold your peace. 
you like, what? God, don't. Because now what he's saying is I want you to do this my way. Not your way, but my way. Because see, we, our way is real easy to find. It's about us, not about God. Because we want to strike out so we'll feel good, not so God feels good. We ain't even considering how God is feeling. That's our way. I want to fix this. I want them to hurt like I hurt. Oh. I want them to hurt like I hurt, hurt me or hurt you. He says, no. See, this one, God does those other cheek things. Well, you turn. Oh, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to turn it up. That's what I'm ready to turn. <laughs> but see, he says, keep his way. Saints, what I'm saying to you, as, we're, as, as the changes of the times and the seasons are happening, we got to keep trusting God by keeping his way. He don't say, start my way. He says, keep my way. Because some of these changes, if you are not careful, they will cause you to stop keeping his way. So he says, wait on the Lord, keep his way. And then he said, look at the promise on the end of this. And he shall exalt you. He's going to honor you. He's going to honor you to inherit the land. Then he says, what, did you get this? When the wicked, not if. He said, I got this. When, let you know, it's, 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 it's in a time frame. When the wicked are cut off, you're going to see it. It may look like you're not going to be around right now, but you're going to be there. Have you ever, I, I'm just, just for a moment, I want, want to bring this home a little bit. Ever been in a situation where somebody has done something or a, a company or whatever has done something, and they've done something to you, and I'll give you a for instance. Company that done something to me. Company. They told, they, 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 I was in a position, and the position I had was similar to what Angela does. I was the benefits coordinator. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then they brought in my boss and had me train her for three months, right before they let me go. They offered me an entry-level position on an off-shift after 12 years. The economy was bad. Nobody hiring. I said, surely he ain't going to leave. We left. How about the company's no longer here? You're going to live to see it happen. The company, gone. It didn't look like they would ever go nowhere. The company been there before I got there. What's to make you think that they're going to ever close their doors? What's, see, we can wrap ourselves up in things because they look permanent. But if you just keep God's way, you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. Let him deal with it. Wait on him to deal with it. I ain't drive by that and you, you know, go there and shoot up the place and nothing like that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, some of these things I had, I, literally I walked out there with a little box. I had a little box because I always believed that if I ever had to leave, I don't want to carry a whole lot of stuff in my car. That's the way I always have been on my job. It's a little box. I ain't got to come back. Don't need to do that. But to see what God has done when I kept his way. Didn't try to retaliate. 
I t- I, I, let me put it like this. I don't regret leaving. Because if we will allow God to do what he wants to do, you will not regret him doing what he did. Let's keep going here. All right, look at this. We're going to live to see this happen. Verse 35. He says, I've seen the wicked in great power. See them spreading themselves like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not yet. I sought him, but he could not be fallen. See, see look, look, look at this. The fall of the wicked is certain. I don't care if it's a wicked company. I don't care if it's a wicked person. The fall of the wicked is certain. But here's a, did, did you, I was looking at this, and I thought this was very interesting. He says, I sought him, but I couldn't find him. In other words, God wiped away the residue. That company now, their name ain't even out there on the building. If you didn't know they used to be there, and but look what he said. They were spread, they were in great power at one point in time. Spreading like a green bay tree. There are things you all that look like it's never going to change. Look like, see, that's people are fighting battles they shouldn't be fighting. Fighting against the God just said, just keep my way. Just keep my way. You're gonna live to see this happen. In the days to come, we're going to see companies close their doors. And some people are going to look and say, man, why did that company? If you look back over their history, they cheated people out of their wages. And God's judging them. He's going to close the doors because they cheated people out of their wages. If you look now, you got, you, you got technology giants. You got Google. Them folk, they laying off three and 4,000 people. These people make six-figure incomes. You ain't going to just go everywhere and make $149,000 a year. They have money to burn. Ain't no reason. Why are, you, why are you laying people off? When I say Google has money to burn, I mean to burn, literally, as firewood. But you got to lay people off? See, greed is the thing that's moving people. Greed, a covetousness. You know, one of the things, that, one, of the, one of the reasons we, we miss out on understanding stuff today is because the words have changed. They're, they're, they're covetous. But that's what we call greedy now. God's judging this, I'm telling you. Just watch. Be like, Pastor said that. Yeah, you're right. He says, okay. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The future of the righteous is peace. My future is peace. It's not a whole bunch of, I don't care how much chaos is going on out there. My future is peace. I know the times and the seasons are changing. I get that. But my future is peace. Well, Pastor, what you going to do about this? Peace. I got peace. I'm expecting peace. Look at this. This is why. Romans 5 and 1. I'm almost finished. Romans 5 and 1. The Bible says in Romans 5 and 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace. We're not trying to get it. There's a difference with having it as opposed to trying to get it. So see, yes, I'm going to feed on God's faithfulness. Yes, I'm going to delight in him. And you know what? I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to keep trusting in him. I got peace. Verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. I know troubling times are coming. I know that's part of the package. We've been through trouble. But you know who was there with us? God. The one who's a very present help in the time of trouble. Why are we, why are we afraid of some of the things that's changing? The same one that was with us before when we were in trouble is with us now. I got peace. 
Verse 40, and we close. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why? Because they trust in him. Keep trusting the king. I'm going to have help. I'm going to have deliverance. And he's going to save me. Why? Because I trust in him. See, it's a relational thing. It's trust. It's not legality. It's not because you dotted every I and you crossed every T. He just said, can you trust in me? Can you trust in me to take care of you? Can you trust in me with your future when you can't see it? I think of, I always think of our children. It's amazing how our children live in our homes. They're not worried about whether we have enough food. They're not worried about whether you can pay the utility bill. None of that even crosses their mind. I mean, Kia, how many times has Kyle said, Mama, you know, uh, how, 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 how are we going to pay the utilities? You, it came spell utility. They don't care. They know you're going to take care of them. If you and I as natural parents do that and don't allow our children to be disturbed by it, how much more does our heavenly father love us and care for us? So I'm not going to be disturbed by it. Just because it's changing, just because it don't look right, just because it don't feel right, God's got this. Remember the little, the, when we were little kids, we used to sing, he's got the whole world in his hand. If he got all that, he got all that, and we fretting over our situation. God, you got this. I have chosen by the grace of God to live a carefree life. Because he cares for me. I cast all my cares on him. I keep trusting him. I can delight in him. And I can feed on his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hello. Thank you for taking the opportunity to tune in with us on today. I believe it's a tremendous blessing to be able to hear and receive from the word of God. I want to take an opportunity also to challenge you as you move further in not just hearing, but obeying the word of God. The Bible speaks in Romans of the fact that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. However, it doesn't stop there. It also lets us know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then it leads us further to let us know that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. I want to give you an opportunity to meet the Savior today. An opportunity to meet Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The one who died for our sins, who was buried, and who was raised again from the dead. Today, you can know him personally. I want you to take this opportunity to pray with me. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I know that you are the son of the living God. And I believe that you gave your life for me. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you now for saving me. Amen and amen. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer, you've just accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are now part of the family of God. Your life has been changed forever. I want to encourage you now to be a part of a Bible-believing church, somewhere where you can be fed the Word of God. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's important that you're hearing from God. It's important that you're growing in God's grace. I want to encourage you, find a place that you can connect with other like-minded believers and grow in the things of God. It will make all the difference in your new life as you live as unto the Lord. Also want to encourage those that may be watching now 
And maybe you're already saved. Maybe you're already part of a, a, a church and you're just wanting to find somewhere where you can continue to grow in the things of God and add or supplement your faith. Thank you for taking this opportunity and allowing us to be a part of that supplement. Also, I want to say this. Some of you all may be watching and you say, well, how can I give to that ministry? How can I sow into that ministry? Well, listen, I want to encourage you to take the opportunity. We have an app that you can actually uh, download to your phone and you can give to this ministry at any time that you want to. Or feel free to go to our website. You can go to our website and on our website, you will find uh, an opportunity to donate. There's a donate button. Click on that button and it will further direct you into being able to give into this ministry. Listen, I believe that giving is a gain and not a loss. Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible lets us know that he increases the fruits of our righteousness when we give, the Bible lets us know that he causes us to increase. He increases the fruits of our righteousness. It's all because God has allowed us to partake in the work that he is doing in the earth. And that is giving. That is giving of his son unto us. So when we give, we have an opportunity to imitate what God has been doing for us all along. Because it wasn't that we deserved it. It was that God was so good that he was giving his own son on our behalf. I pray that the message has been a blessing to you and I encourage you to come out, be a part of what we're doing. We're located at 740 North Main Street here in High Point, North Carolina. Feel free to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or every Wednesday evening at 7.20 p.m. God bless you and thank you again for being with us. God bless.